All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the last section of our Unit 5. We're going to be dealing with what's called related rates. These end up being some of the most challenging problems that we'll do all year long, um, but it's just a process that needs to be followed, and quite honestly, these are some of the best problems out there because this actually shows calculus in a real-world situation. So we're going to be looking at a problem that looks kind of like this. Suppose you have some point or particle moving along some curve so that the coordinates are differentiable functions of time, which means we're going to be finding the derivative with respect to time. You notice down here in the bottom here, we're looking at dd, dt, and ddx, dt, and dy, dt. So we're going to be using a lot of implicit differentiation here. So the distance d from the origin p, then we can use a chain rule and all that sort of stuff. Let me show you what this is going to look like. So we know that the d, actually if we just think about a coordinate on our plane somewhere, we have the point x, y. Well, we know that the distance here distance is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. And what we can do is we can actually, because we know that x and y are both differentiable with respect to time, we can differentiate both sides. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be differentiating with respect to t on the whole function. So it's not with respect to x as normal. So everything that we do has to be done implicitly. So we first look at the chain rule saying that the derivative of d is 1, but since we're taking it with respect to time, we get dd, d time, dt, is equal to, okay, so chain rule says find the derivative of the square root function which is 1 over 2 radicals of x squared plus y squared. And that's going to be multiplied by the derivative of the inside. Now, normally, we would just write the derivative of x squared as 2x. But that is when we do dx, or uh, the derivative with respect to x. But since we're doing it with respect to t, it, again, using implicit differentiation, has to be dx dt. And we do the same for y. So we get 2y and dy dt. Now here's what you have to understand. What we are doing is finding a rate. We found the rate at which the distance changes with respect to time. Here, this is the rate at which x changes, and this is the rate at which y changes, the dy dt and the dx dt. What we're going to be doing is we're going to know a lot of these values, and we're going to be plugging them in to solve for one of these things. Notice you have a lot of variables here. You have a d, d, dt. You have an x and a y, and again, you have an x and a y here. So that's three variables already. This particular one has a dx dt and a dy dt. So there's five different variables going on. So in a problem like this, you'll, be, you'll have been given four of them. And you have to, because that's the only way we know how to solve equations, is if we have four of the five variables. So the word problems are going to be very important for you to actually read and make sure you understand every little piece. So we're going to start off with six little strategies here. The first and foremost is obviously understand the problem. Identify what you're trying to find and what you know. So just make a note of it. That's usually what we do in word problems. We figure out what we know and what we want to know. Develop a mathematical model. Usually it starts with just drawing a picture and labeling what you know and then writing the equation. That's what mathematical model means. After you write an equation, or sorry, develop mathematical model and then write your equation, 
reading this wrong here. Usually things come from your knowledge of geometry, like the volume of a cone or the volume of a sphere or the length of the hypotenuse of a right triangle or the Pythagorean theorem, areas, all that sort of stuff. The equations are usually going to be that type of equation. After you have an equation, you're going to differentiate both sides and differentiate with respect to t as we did just a moment ago. Make sure you follow the rules of implicit differentiation or chain rules. And then use the values that you already know. You're not allowed to do any substitutions until the very end, until you have differentiated. Do not try to put the values in before differentiating. You're not going to get an answer. And then whenever we say interpret the solution, that means just what does your answer actually mean? If you got an answer of 6, but what is that 6? Does it represent a speed or a rate or a distance? Make sure you understand what that answer actually means. So here's our first example, first of two. So you have some hot air balloon. It's rising straight up from a level field, and you track that you are 500 feet from liftoff point. At the moment, the rangefinder's elevation angle is pi force. That angle is increasing at a rate of 0.14. And I want to know how fast is the balloon rising at that moment. So let's go to our next page and try to figure this out. So our hot air balloon is out here somewhere, and it starts to lift off straight up. You are standing 500 feet away, but we're just going to note that this is a distance x. So we're going to say x is 500. And on this triangle, this is your theta. This is your angle of elevation. And we're going to say that theta is equal to pi fourths radians. I also know the rate of change of theta is 0 0.14. That means the derivative of theta with respect to t is 0 0.14. If I was to think about this as the height of the balloon, that would be a y. And I don't know what y is right now. But we're looking for the rate that it's flying, or the rate that it's rising. So you might look at this and go, oh, uh, Pythagorean theorem to find this distance, but that's not the case. We don't care what this distance is from here. What we want to look at, first of all, is this theta and these two sides here. Now, because this 500 is actually, actually a fixed value, this particular one is something that we get to use. So if I was to look at this as trigonometry, I have the tangent of theta is equal to y over 500. And if I wanted to get rid of the fraction there, I would say that y is equal to 500 tangent of theta. Now, I can't use theta equals pi fourths yet because that angle is changing. So I don't get to use that, but because the 500 is a solid value, I get to use 500. It will never change. Now we want to differentiate. If we differentiate with respect to t, the left side becomes dy dt, and that's pretty nice because that's what you want to find. And notice I don't actually care how high the balloon is. dy dt is going to equal 
500 times the derivative of tangent, which is secant squared, times the derivative of theta, because theta is a variable. So d theta dt. Now I have enough information to solve for dy dt. So I get 500 times the secant of pi over 4. That's my theta. Now that we've taken the derivative, we can actually do the substitutions. And I know that d theta dt is 0.14. And since it's going up, it's a positive 0.14. All right, well, the secant of pi fourths is the reciprocal of cosine. Cosine is root 2 over 2, and the reciprocal of that is root 2. But root 2 squared is 2. Multiply all this together, you get 1,000 times 114, uh, and you get 140. And then you need to reinterpret the answer. The answer is not just 140. This is rising up. This is going upwards, because it's positive, at a rate of 140 feet per second. And there you go. We've actually just solved the problem. And to think about that, that's actually a pretty neat little answer because all we knew is the distance from where we were at and the rate at which the angle was changing. So we knew how fast this angle was getting bigger, and by knowing that, we could tell how fast the balloon was rising. All right, let's try another one here. So it's a lot more wordy, obviously, but you have a high-speed chase, basically. And the two cars are coming down this road from the north. And then the car in front turns to the left and starts heading east. And here is the cop car. And here is the uh, convict. And we know when the cruiser is six-tenths of a mile, we'll call that x, and 0 0.8 is equal to y, we know this car has moved 0 0.8 miles away. We know stuff about this distance. When they held the radar in the car, the distance between the two cars is increasing. So if I called this distance z, I don't know the distance, even though I could find it. I do know that dz dt, the rate at which it's changing, is 20 miles per hour. And I know over here, dx dt is equal to 60. But here's a different thing. It's going down. That distance is getting smaller. So we're going to say that's actually a negative 60. We want to know how fast is the car moving as we're going along here. So let's take a look at this little bit better picture here. If we were to create a new triangle, new picture for this problem, Here's the cruiser, and here is the bad guy. If this was x and y and z, we know some things. We know x is equal to 0 0.8. We know that y is equal to 0 0.6. And what this represents is it's just at 1 individual time. So that's why we can't use these values when we do the problem a little bit later. We know dx 
dt is negative 60. We said that a minute ago. We are actually trying to solve for dy dt. How fast is the bad guy traveling away? And to save us some help later on, we know that z is actually the square root of x squared plus y squared by the, uh, by the Pythagorean theorem. And we know that dz dt is equal to 20. So we need to set up an equation here. By the Pythagorean theorem, we know that z squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. And that's actually the only equation we need in order to solve this problem. We then differentiate both sides. When we differentiate both sides, I'm going to come right over here. This becomes 2z dz dt. Um, I didn't mention, notice I didn't get to use any of these numbers because everything on this triangle is changing. So nothing is staying still. This y value is getting bigger. This x value is getting smaller. And this z distance is also getting bigger. So we can't use any numbers here yet. Take the derivative here. We get d or 2x and dx dt. And we get 2y dy dt. All right, so notice here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 variables which means we've give, been given five, and notice this is actually up here. I gave us, I wrote out the five things that we know. We know z can be rewritten as this statement here. So notice that all these twos here, we can cancel, we can divide everything by two, make our life a little bit simpler here. z is the square root of 0.8 squared plus... 0.6 squared times dz dt. We know that this distance is changing at 20 miles per hour. We know x is 0 0.8. And we know dx dt is negative 60 because that's getting smaller at negative 60 miles per hour. We know y is 0 0.6, but we don't know dy dt. Notice this is now just simple algebra. If you simplified this, added this thing to the other side, and divide by 0 0.6, I'm not going to show you all the little dirty work here, but solving for dy dt, you would get dy dt is equal to 70. And that's actually our answer. So we need to interpret this answer now. We are saying that this y value is changing at 70. This is a rate because it's the derivative. So this is changing at 70 miles per hour. So our bad guy is racing away at 70 miles an hour in the easter, easterly direction here. All right, so I'm only going to give the two examples. I can continuously do examples here, but they're basically the same idea. If you follow those six steps, you got to write, you have to write your equation. You have to differentiate both sides. And then you need to substitute in the values that you know and solve for the one that you don't. All right, this takes a lot of time. This will probably take us at least three days, if not two days. Um, I hope you guys get a jump start on this assignment over the weekend. And I will see you guys tomorrow.